right? Now, back to Moxley. Uh, he appeared on Chris Jericho's podcast, which dropped this morning. We're doing this on May 29. Oh, boy. It dropped this morning. Uh, I have a bunch of notes about it, but do you want to go into this or do you want me to start? It is what you think it is. It is Vince McMahon ruling with an iron fist. Yeah. Good shit, pal, but it's not good shit, pal at all. Yes. It is actually terrible shit, pal. Uh, <laughs> or as he would say, terrible poop, pal. Yeah. That needs the pooper scooper to pick it up. Yep. Uh, what the hell? It is literally exactly what we have always said it was and what every writer tells me it is. Yeah. It is Vince McMahon. Yep. Yep, and uh, and Moxley now, to his credit, even though he complained openly about creative and he gave some examples, he made he he tried his best not to like shit personally on anybody. I, now, granted, I loved what I loved it. He said, "I am very grateful for the WWE. Yes, uh, they afforded me a great quality of life, helped me grow as a person. I am now an adult. I was a kid. I have an immense amount of gratitude for them. Now, let me bury them for two hours." That's yep. exactly what he said. That's what he said, yeah. And and I really like the fact that the person doing this interview was Chris Jericho because they have relatable stories to each other. And I really like that because uh, uh, I, I keep on wanting to call him Dean Ambrose, but Moxley wanted to basically, you know, he said, things were cool for a while. Like you just said, I met my wife there. Uh, you know, I started there as a kid eight years ago. This is what I always wanted to do. I packed up all my stuff and I moved to Florida. And, and it's what he wanted. And it was, and, and how many times have we heard this from people, Sean? They take the passion for wrestling away from you. How many times have we heard that from how many A different lot. people? And he was another one. He said, they take the passion for wrestling away from you. He said, wrestling was my first love. I loved doing promos. He said, there it turned to dread. Like he dreaded doing them. Uh, and, and he gave me a couple of examples. I don't know if we need to go in depth on the examples. Um, well, I, I spoke to several wrestlers about this podcast because i mean in wwe and there's one in particular i'll tell you who they are off the air but i get the feeling it wouldn't be hard for you to guess but we're not going to play that game yep but they said <clears throat> this is quote his podcast is breaking my heart because it's verbatim how i feel i'm at the part where physical nausea uh hits every monday to which i replied maybe you need a gas mask or a hazmat suit cute there you go. And they said, glad it's out there. It won't change anything, but I do get paid well every week. Um, and I brought up the CM Punk thing, and they said, Moxley is more respected as a non-whiny bitch, I'd think, by the office. Punk had a tendency to complain. Ambrose did the work. I've never heard words spoken like I felt uh, and felt like I did listening to that. He deserves the best. I thought I could make anything work, but maybe I can't after hearing that. And I really that believe fucking depressing, Jimmy. Yeah, and and I really think because one thing that Mossy said in that interview is he said when I told him I wasn't going to resign, I thought they're going to take me off television, uh, yeah. and they kept him on television and they buried him a bit, but at the same time they made a big deal out of the Shield's last stand and everything. And I think it's because and he said this himself. He would go to Vincent Man every Monday and he would fight to not have to do what he was told to do. But then he would tell Vince, "Okay, this is your show." And so if you want me to do this shit, I'm the man for the job because this is your show. Uh, and so I think they respected the fact that he would do it. He gave a lot of examples. I mean, the whole thing with South Rollins where he had to make like the people stunk and he had to wear the gas mask and he had to do the vaccinations in the ass because he was trying to protect himself from rabies from the people. We buried it on the post show. We buried yes. it on this show. And people were like, oh, no. Yeah. Yes. It, and he, he pushed back on all of it. Uh, he didn't want to do any of it. He thought it was stupid. He said, uh, he said that prior to, he said that July of last year while he was injured, that's when he knew definitively, I'm not going to resign. And he told one story about prior to getting injured, he was on the SmackDown brand as a babyface. They handed him a script for a promo. He hated it because he thought it made him look stupid. He went to Vincent Mann. Vincent Mann laughed and said, well, that's you. You're different. That's you. And he said that he said to Vince Mann, oh, so I'm stupid. You look at me like I'm stupid. And he, yes. said he, he said he left Vincent Mann's office knowing this is how they look at me. This is their perception of me. Uh, and so he knew that he was ready to go. And uh, Jericho said the same thing. He said being in the ring was fun, but he said it was exhausting having to go to Vince's office every Monday and fight to not have to do the stupid shit that they wrote for you. 
And most of the time, you had to do it anyway, because most of the time, he would get the writer to take it out, but Vince would put it back in. Uh, he even told one story about how he was given a note from Vince McMahon, and the note said, you need to do the promos verbatim. That's what the note said. And it's really a shame, man. It's a shame that, they, like everybody says, they're writing for an audience of one, uh, and, uh, and it's, it's becoming exhausting mentally for all these guys. And Jericho himself, he said, that's why I left. I wasn't going to leave. I never intended to work for anybody else. I had the opportunity to work Omega in Japan, and I couldn't believe the freedom I had. I couldn't believe the freedom with my promos and with, the, with putting the match together. And he said it was fun. And so that's why he just kind of kept rolling with it. And if you need a favor out of WWE, they're probably not going to be there. Remember when Vince said, need a favor, pal, to CM Punk all those times? Yes. And it didn't work out. He said the same thing to Dean Ambrose. Tried to get him to work the European tour. Well, what happened when Chris Jericho hit up WWE for a favor of his own and he wanted a NXT talent on the Jericho cruise. Right. Not WWE talent, NXT talent. Right. They they flew I th I believe they flew him to Stanford and told him no in person. Right. And I mean, one and he he had he just trumpeted WWE for life, never leaving, only WWE, only Vince McMahon. Yeah, and he, he also put in there. He also told a couple of stories that's kind of indicative, again, of what you always hear about Vince McMahon. One of them was he flew himself to Connecticut when he was coming back from injury because he had ideas for a grandiose return and he wanted to change his character and whatnot. He said he flew himself to Connecticut. He met with Vince about plans for his return. He wanted to debut changes to his character. He left deflated uh, because he was basically told that he was going to go back as Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins, you know, sidekick kind of thing. Then he got a phone call basically saying, oh, you're coming back next week to be in his corner. Uh, and so he felt deflated about all of that. When he turned down the contract, Vince McMahon brought him into his office, and Vince McMahon said to him, why didn't you tell me that you had problems with creative? And Ambrose was ready to lose his mind. I, why do you think I went in your office every freaking Monday to bitch about the stuff you wrote for me, kind of thing. And that, again, is what they're dealing with. And one other thing that uh, Ambrose said in that Jericho interview, he said he hopes that a byproduct of AEW is that WWE will reevaluate their creative process. He said WWE creative sucks, it doesn't work, and it's terrible. Uh, it's where we're at, man. And, and you know what? How many times have we talked about this? And I feel like a broken record. I know sometimes in the comments people hate that we keep reiterating this, but Vince McMahon is too old. He's too out of touch to oversee creative. He has lost sight of what made him successful to begin with. And I've talked about this before too. I think he so badly wants to be viewed as mainstream entertainment. He wants to be viewed in the same light as television shows and as movies. And so he has incorporated those elements into his show, meaning he's got a massive writing team. Uh, the people that he hires are all have television experience, like the girl with the Emmy from uh, The Young and the Restless or whatever it was. He scripts everybody's promos verbatim, which means that there's no individuality. Everybody sounds the same. And that's kind of where they're at now. And uh, you know something? Popularity is eroding at an alarming rate. We've talked about it. If I was Triple H, I would be damn well concerned. And I think Triple H must be concerned. And this didn't happen overnight. It's been trickling down for 15 years. It started when they were banning words. You know what I mean? You can't say wrestling. You can't say fan. You can't say belt. Then they start scripting promos word for word. Do you remember JBL's story from the Hall of Fame? I don't. JBL is going to do the, the, the induction speech for Ron Simmons, his best friend in the wrestling business, and a writer handed him a script. JBL, who's going to induct Ron Simmons, and a writer handed him a script. JBL tore the script up, threw it in the writer's face, and said, don't ever bring me a, a script when I'm going to do something for my, for my best friend like that. And that's kind of where things have gotten to with the company. There is no better time for a competitor to step up than right now. AEW has an opportunity no one else I don't think is ever going to get again because they have the funding, they have the television deal, and they have the roster. And if they cannot succeed, Sean, no one is going to succeed as a competitor to WWE. And again, people that are kind of anti-AEW because they're, they're lifelong WWE fans, you need to listen to John Moxley's uh, interview with Chris Jericho. And you need to understand, nobody wants WWE to die. We want the industry to be healthy. And maybe if AEW is successful, then they'll get the shit, their shit together in WWE. And maybe Vince McMahon will decide, okay, maybe I need to take a step back and give Hunter a little bit more uh, creative freedom, and maybe things will change. Yeah, creative freedom is important. I do it with my writers, too. I say, right. go out, do what you want, make it good, and, and we'll rock with it. Uh, if you stifle people and you limit them, and eventually they're going to want to fly the coop. And it made me very happy 
because I all I heard for so long, Jimmy was, oh, all that money, all that money, all that money. I, I'm very happy with what I do, and I get paid pretty well to do it. But if I didn't have creative satisfaction, I don't know that I would enjoy it so much. 